So I'm feeling a little bored again here at the office and I thought why not kill some time and build another epic gaming PC. Before we begin, I'm gonna give a huge thanks to Dr. Phone for sponsoring today's video. Dr. Phone is an all-in-one app that lets you recover data from your phone and transfer data between your phone and computer. Through the data recovery, you can recover everything from your iOS device, from contacts to messages, photos, voicemail, and more. The phone manager lets you transfer music from your iTunes to your device and vice versa. But my favorite feature is the photo transfer. I hate the way that iPhone organizes the photos and videos when you plug your phone to the PC to transfer files, but with the phone manager, it's organized the way it should have been from the very beginning, by date. This makes it super easy not only to view the files, but also transfer whatever you want to your PC. Using the WhatsApp transfer feature, you're able to transfer your WhatsApp, Viber, and other app messages between devices. They even include a handful of other useful tools you have access to, like mirroring your phone and removing the phone lock screen or Apple ID in case you forget your password. Dr. Phone has a bunch of cool apps that I'm sure you guys will find very useful. Check it out for free by clicking my link down below. All right, so the theme of the build is gonna be black on white, AKA Stormtrooper. I've been doing a lot of all white builds lately on the channel, so I thought we can kind of take a break from that and do something slightly different. So I'm gonna throw in some black in there for a beautiful, beautiful contrast. We're also gonna be doing a non RGB build for the first time ever on this channel. And we have the perfect case for this, you guys. You got the Silent Base 802, which is the new full tower from Be Quiet. We'll talk more about this uh, later in this video. So let's go over the parts real quick, starting with the CPU. We are going with the uh, Ryzen 9 5900X. This is a 12 core, 24 thread processor. This will be most. <laughs> This means the PC will not only be for gaming, but also for workstation as well. Pairing with the CPU, we got the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3080. I went with this card for two reasons. Number one, it's the only 3080 I have here at the office that's gonna blend in perfectly with the color scheme. It's got this all black gunmetal gray color scheme. It's gonna, it's gonna fit beautifully. Number two, it's the only 3080 I have that has dual eight pin PCI connectors. And the cables that I already have made unfortunately can fit to eight pin PCI connectors. Speaking of cables, I guess we can go through this right now. These are the custom cables I ordered from Mainframe Customs. They do such phenomenal work when it comes to custom cables that I highly, highly, highly recommend them if you care at all what your PC looks like. I use Cable Mod a lot, don't get me wrong, they're great, but they're kind of like the McDonald's of custom cables. These guys are like the in and out or the five guys, or whatever amazing burger joint you guys have at your place. <laughs> that's that's what these guys are. So that's why I always go with um, like the premium cables for my, uh, for my personal rigs. But I'm not saying this is my personal rig, obviously this is just for the channel, but if I were to build myself a PC, these are the cables I would go with. Moving on to storage, we are throwing in a simple two terabyte M.2 SSD from uh, Crucial. This will be plenty for the operating system and a few games. And then moving on to memory. I don't have any anti RGB or non RGB RAM sticks at the office. So I decided to go with something good looking that's gonna look just as good with the lights off. So the tough RAM RGB from Thermal Take are one of the most beautiful RAM sticks in existence. You can, you can fight me in the comment section all you want but there's no denying how amazing these sticks look. And they're pretty fast too. So 3200 megahertz running at CL16 timing and we're throwing in a total of 32 gigs. So I think they're gonna look beautiful inside the uh, inside the build. Right behind that, we got the brand new N7 B550 from NZXT. And yes guys, I did check this time. <laughs> it is the white one, not the black one to avoid the um, disaster we had last time. Uh, why is this in black? Oh my god. I'm such a stooge. So one of the things I like about this board aesthetically is that the IO cover is in black and it just adds to the contrast of the entire build. This is also NZXT's first ever AMD motherboard. Can you believe it? They've always stuck to Intel, but uh, for the B550 platform, they finally started to branch off and create their very first AM4 socket. So. Pretty excited to test this out and um, see how it does and overclocking and stuff. So moving on to the cooler that fell earlier. This is the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 
4. Again, we're sticking to the uh, the non-RGB build and I decided to go with an air cooler this time around to change things up. And this beefy cooler is gonna do really well in keeping the temps down on the 5900X. Underneath that, we do have some fans that we're gonna throw inside. Again, non-RGB. And of course, we're finishing off with the RM850X fully modular power supply from Corsair. But yeah, these are all the parts we will be working with. Super excited to put this together and see how it's gonna turn out. So here's the case that I'll be building in today. This is the new Be Quiet Silent Base 802 in white. They do come in black as well. One of the cool things about this case is that it's modular. You can decide if you want to go with something with more airflow or you can even do a silent build by swapping out a few of the parts. So by default, it does come with the, um, the airflow configuration. We got the top fan filter and then we got the front panel mesh as you guys can see. But let's say you wanna do a silent build. Well, you can actually swap these out. Okay. So you can basically just slide off the front panel and then you can swap it with the silent counterpart. So as you guys can see, the front panel over here has some type of memory foam on the back of it to help with acoustics. So I'm gonna slide this on here instead. Just like that, doesn't require any tools, which is awesome. And then for the top, we have the same exact thing. These are all magnetic too, so they just basically snap in place, which is awesome. There it is, now you have a silent build. Now, obviously, I don't know if this is just a gimmick or if it's a marketing thing. I'm gonna test this out at the end of the video once the build is done and see if it makes any difference in terms of temperatures and acoustics. Oh man, I'm such a sucker for white PC products, especially motherboards. Call me basic, I don't care. These look so good. AMD, if you're watching, can you please make the gold triangle on these CPUs just a little bigger? Not for me, but with the newbies. What the hell? How did the M.2 SSD move? Looks like I was trying to escape. Sorry, dude. You're destined to be in this build. So one of my subscribers actually pointed this out in the, uh, the Big Red version 3.5. That NZXT doesn't provide any thermal pads for their M.2 cover, which is actually interesting. This is the first time I'm seeing this, or realizing this actually. NZXT, why don't you give us any thermal pads? Luckily, the M.2 SSD in my current PC isn't overheating or anything, so I'm not really complaining, but still, it's kind of bizarre how you guys don't include any thermal pads for your M.2 covers. We do have another M.2 SSD slot down here in case, but we're not gonna use that. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Damn, these are some of the sexiest RAM sticks ever. Even without any lights on, they look Incredible. That's why I think these are gonna look so damn great inside this case. Oh yeah, that is looking amazing already. So I'm kind of scared now. Once the RAM sticks got installed, I'm looking at the tiny little space that we're given for the CPU cooler, and now I'm having doubts that this beefy cooler is gonna fit here. I really hope we don't run into any clearance issues. All right, let's just, uh, let's see if this is gonna fit. Oh God, definitely, definitely not this way. The ram sticks are a little too high. It's coming in contact with the cable. 
Let's see if we can flip this around. We had just enough clearance. You guys can see that. Oh my God. It's like a few millimeters. So guys, I did double check and apparently we can go with this configuration if we want. The fan sits directly on top of the RAM sticks um, without any issues. But aesthetically, it doesn't look it doesn't look great because we got the fan blocking off like three of the RAM sticks. So, so yeah, I'm gonna have to swap this fan, put it in the back and then put the extra fan uh, in the middle. And that way it's going to look a lot better. You also like it when I spread it, don't you? Yeah, you like that, don't you? Yeah, you dirty CPU. All right, time to reposition the fan. So I want the Be Quiet logo still facing in the right direction. So I'm gonna have to swap the front fan and put it in the rear. So check out this clever installation method from the Be Quiet Cooler. You twist off these little hidden caps from the top. You slide in this long and thin screwdriver from the top in order to tighten the screw that's holding the bracket together. What? That's actually pretty cool. And then once you're done, you just put the cap back on. No one suspects a thing. Look at that. Now we just gotta do the same thing for the opposite side. And finally, we can insert the fan in the middle. All right, now it's time to put this beefy boy inside the case. So check this out guys, if you want to remove the side panels, either from the front or the rear, all you gotta do is press this button. It basically releases the side panel and you can even use one hand to lift it open. That is pretty cool. There's one more thing I forgot to mention about this case. You can actually remove the motherboard tray, flip it upside down, and do an inverted PC build. So if you wanna put your case on the left side of your setup, then that is definitely an option. In addition to that, you can even remove these panels over here on top of the PSU shroud. So this will give you some extra space to mount an additional 120 or 140 millimeter fan. And you also have the option of doing a push and pull configuration uh, if you do plan on putting a radiator in the front. And if you wanna take it one step further and go even more crazy, you can remove this power supply shroud side panel and the top bracket over here and install up to a 240 millimeter radiator on the bottom over here for a pretty sweet looking custom water cool system so obviously be quiet as thought of everything you guys can pretty much do whatever you want with this case the case also comes with three of their pure wings to 140 millimeter fans we got one in the back and two more in the front so i'm just going to keep those the way it is and add two additional 140 millimeter fans on the top of the case That is one beefy cooler. Damn. Is it just me guys or do you also feel a little bit of anxiety just looking at that massive thing hanging from the motherboard? I feel like it's about to snap down any second now. All right, so the case does come with a hard drive cage on the bottom. You can install up to two hard drives if you like, but since we're not installing any in this build, we can remove this. That way we can get some extra space for the uh, power supply cables. Additionally, they do include one extra hard drive cage if you do want to hook this up to your case. That's kind of what those white rectangular pieces are in the back. I'll show you guys how to install this in case you do pick up this case and want to hook up a hard drive. So you pick any slot you want. So for example, let's just say we're going with the bottom one and then push it out from the back. You pull it out from the front and then you can slide the hard drive cage from the back. 
So there you have it. You can hook up to additional five hard drives plus the two that comes with the case. So total seven hard drives if you want in this case. But I feel like hard drives are slowly becoming extinct. So eventually everyone's gonna be rocking M.2 SSDs or traditional 2.5 inch SSDs. But yeah, the option is there if you guys wanna build like a NAS system or something crazy with multiple hard drives. I guess we can take this time to install the power supply. Every case should have a removable power supply bracket. This thing makes the power supply installation so much easier. All right, now it's time to hook up the rest of the fans inside the case. Now we do have a little bit of a dilemma. As I mentioned earlier, we do have 140 millimeter fans in the front, two for intake, and then we have one for exhaust in the back. If I hook up three more 140 millimeter fans as exhaust on the top, then there's gonna be too much negative pressure inside the case. This means more air is being pulled out of the case than there is being pushed inside. So I wanna try and maintain neutral or at least positive air pressure inside the case. So I wanna see if we can hook up an additional 140 millimeter in the front, and then I'll just do two fans on the top as exhaust. Then it'll be balanced. It'll be three intake and then three exhaust. So not only does the front of the case support up to a 420 millimeter radiator or triple 140 millimeter fans, but the top is also the same exact size. So triple 140 millimeter fans or another 420 mil rad on the top. That is insane. I love that the case has a removable bracket from the top, making the AIO or fan installation super easy. All I gotta do is remove these two screws and slide out the bracket. Look at this. That is awesome. Damn, look at all that extra space from the top bracket to the motherboard tray. That is insane. All right, so the fans are hooked up. I kind of want um, a little bit of space between them so it doesn't look that empty near the top, so. I think that looks good. All right, looking pretty good so far. I think we are pretty much done with the build. Just got a slap in the graphics card and we are good to go. Guys, I'm discovering more things about this case as I'm building in it. I just discovered a fan hub tucked away in the back, which is perfect. This is good for six fans. So three of the pre-installed fans are already hooked up as you can see, but I do have three extra ports to work with. So what a coincidence. I just installed three 140 millimeter fans. So I'm just gonna hook it up to this fan hub and call it a day. This eliminates the need for me to plug in the extra fans into the motherboard itself. So super convenient. All right, here's a quick little tip for you guys if you run through the same issue like I am. So let's say your USB 3 header on your motherboard is located right here at the edge. Well, it's a little too close for me to plug in my USB 3 cable. I'm gonna have to really bend the cable in order for it to fit in. But I don't wanna do that because it bends the cable way too much. Well, here's what you can do. You can buy these USB 3 extension cables instead on Amazon. These are way more flexible. So you basically plug in one end to your motherboard and because it's so thin and flexible, you can route this straight through the grommet and plug in your USB 3 cable from the other side. Look how cleaner that looks.
Time for the main event of the evening. Oh yeah, welcome to your new home. It would have been cool to go with the vertical mount, but because of how big this uh, cooler is, unfortunately it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to mount this horizontally. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here she is, finally complete. That is such a clean black on white system. Worthy enough to be in a Stormtrooper setup for sure. Let's go ahead and actually put these panels on. We're gonna start off with the mesh and then swap to the, uh, the silent build just so we can test out the acoustics and thermals. All right, last side panel. And final peel. First boot, let's do this. Okay, that does not sound good. Okay, I think one of the cables is stuck on one of the fans, so <laughs> that did not sound good. Let me fix that, I'll be right back. All right, so the rear fan cable was hitting the fan blade from the inside of the heatsink. So I took this apart, rerouted the cable. Now we should be good to go. Honestly, even with the, um, the side panel off and the mesh front panel and filter on top, it's still very, very quiet. We're gonna have to see just how quiet it is under full load. But so far, this is looking really clean. Let me put the side panel back on. That nasty RGB has to go. All right, so I went and turned off the lighting from the memory sticks and even on the graphics card. We officially have no source of light, not even an LED strip inside this case, and it looks glorious. I feel like there's a lot of things to be said about an anti-RGB build. A lot of kids these days don't understand the struggle that us gamers went through back in the day. I'm talking 10 plus years ago where we had no RGB, we had colored hardware back in the day, you guys. You have no idea how difficult it was for us to research and find those parts with specific colors just so we can have a dedicated color scheme inside of our PC. Nowadays, we can just buy anything we want and change the colors from the RGB. We have it so easy right now. Anyways, I'm done ranting. Let's do some testing with the uh, PC case and see if these modular parts actually do anything. We're gonna start off with the mesh filter up top with the mesh front panel. We're gonna play GTA 5 for about 30 minutes or so, that way we can get temps to equalize and reach its peak numbers, and then we can come back and test acoustics and of course, temperatures. We're gonna swap to the uh, the silent build and do the exact same test, and then we'll, uh, we'll see if there's any difference. Alrighty then folks, after 30 minutes of a gameplay, here is where we are so far for temps. Uh, GPU is sitting around 56, 57 degrees Celsius. We will check peak temps in a bit when we swap over to hardware info, but for now, I'm gonna show you guys the um, the current stats. Unfortunately, MSI Afterburner doesn't have any support for the new Zen 3 processors. As you guys can see, there is no temps for the CPU. So we're gonna check temps and the peak temps for the CPU when we switch over to hardware info. In terms of noise levels, well, let's turn this on and see how loud the system is. I'm gonna swap the mics real quick and I'll let you guys hear what the system sounds like. Okay, so really good noise levels, 45 to 46 decibels, even with the, uh, the mesh panels. This is already an awesome quiet system. So I'm actually really curious to see how much more quiet it can get swapping to the silent panels. All right guys, so for CPU temps, we are looking at around 57 to 58 degrees Celsius currently during full load with peak temperatures of 72.3 C. All 
All right, so the silent panels are on. Again, we'll come back in 30 minutes and check the temps and acoustics. All right, guys, another 30 minutes later, and here we are with the new temperatures using the silent panels. Not a huge difference in temps, believe it or not. GPU still hovering around 57C compared to before. I think it's, uh, it's about one degree warmer, if I'm not mistaken, which is actually pretty damn good. Looks like not much has changed just from swapping those panels. Now here is one thing that did change, the CPU temps. We are now hovering around 82 degrees Celsius, which is actually the peak temperatures as well for the 5900X. So looks like most of the change came from the CPU and not the GPU. Now let's take a look at the, uh, the acoustics. So I'm gonna flip the microphone and let you guys hear what the system sounds like on full load. Okay, so not much of a huge difference when it comes to acoustic levels. We were seeing maybe one decibel quieter than before. I do wanna test one more thing out. Actually, there is a dedicated fan controller on the top of the case. Since we have all the fans plugged into the fan hub behind the case, we can actually control the speed of the fans over here. So I wonder if I ramp up the fan speed, if we're gonna get cooler temps on the CPU. So it's currently on auto. I'm gonna flip it to the max, so number three and see if the temps go down. All right guys, so it doesn't look like the CPU temps are dropping any further. It is sticking to around 78.4 degrees Celsius, which is technically cooler than before, but not by a huge margin. We are looking about three to four degrees Celsius cooler uh, with the max fan speed. Okay guys, here's my final verdict with a Silent Base 802. First off, I loved building in it. I think it's a really fun case to build in with tons of support for expandability, water cooling, and larger components in general. You guys have so much flexibility to build a system of your dreams in this case. However, with that said, the modular parts didn't really do much for me. There was hardly any difference between the silent panels and the mesh panels other than higher temps for the CPU. And I feel like that's mostly because I went a little overkill and built a very silent PC to begin with. I mean, I put in one of the quietest CPU coolers and the most silent fans on the market, so there was no noise to begin with. I feel like this case would be more perfect for people that are using loud hardware, if that makes sense. So if your PC sounds like a jet engine, then yeah, these panels would make a huge difference. Otherwise, if you already own a quiet PC, then I don't see a reason in buying this case other than for aesthetics or expandability. Either way, I'll drop a link to the case and all the parts I use for the build down below if you guys wanna check it out. If you enjoyed the video, wanna see more PC builds on the channel, then consider smacking that like button. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.